from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the He's a blessed Savior. He's worthy to be praised. He's an on-time God. Oh, yes. He's a God that would never leave us. He said he would never forsake us. He said, Lord, he would be with us even until the ends of the earth. We have that blessed assurance this morning. And so we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his course with praise, because he's worthy. And so this morning, I know it's early, but, you know, we're here. We, we, let us just focus on him this morning, and I know we have various needs and concerns, but God says, I, I, I know all about it. I know all about it. The scripture says that, believe it or not, before we even call, he has an answer this morning. Because he is the answer. So this morning, while we're standing in his presence, let us just bow our heads and just focus on our Lord and Savior this morning. Because he is worthy to be praised. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, God, to come to you this day because you have made this day, Lord. We woke up this morning. We had no doubt. Mm. When I rose this morning, had no doubt, Lord, that you were going to just meet our needs, Lord. Lord, we thank you because we know you're here because you said we're two or three together that you are in our midst. And because you hear, Lord, you are here, we trust you, Lord. We lean on you. We put our trust in you, God. For you are the faithful God that keeps your word to a thousand generations. Lord, I thank you today as I stand before you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would just have your way. Lord, my neighbor that's standing on the right side of me and the left side of me, Lord, I pray for them today, Lord, that you would just touch them, Lord that you will meet every need of their life, Lord. Lord, I thank you, God. I thank you. Thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. We just plead the blood of Jesus. We declare that no weapon formed by the enemy this morning will be able to prosper. And every tongue that will rise against us, we condemn it now. Lord, give your angels command and charge over us this day. This day, Lord. We pray, Lord, that he that had an ear would hear what the Spirit has to say. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This morning, I just, this psalm is on my heart, and it's the 23rd Psalm. It reads, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. Mm. He restored our soul. I want you to just focus on that. He restored our soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comforted me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Just want you to be encouraged today. It says, surely goodness and mercy. I like to say they're first cousins. Goodness and mercy shall follow me, shall follow us all the days of our life. I want you to be encouraged this morning, saints. At this time, we'll have our responsive reading, my sister Wendy. Our responsive reading this morning also comes from the 23rd Psalm, um, and it reads as follows. This is from the New King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Good morning, church. Uh, I have two offerings uh, sent in today, one by uh, Sister Linda Good and the other by Lester G. You please stand with bow head. Uh, precious God, we thank you for this day, dear Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to give unto you, dear Lord, for your mission and for your work of this church and for this community, dear God. We thank you for all in attendance here today, dear Lord. We pray that you bless uh, those who were given, those who had the desire to give, dear Lord, but for some reason uh, were not able to give, dear God. We pray that this uh, funds will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And then follow the ushers. You're my joy in the time of sorrow, oh Lord. You're my strength when there is no other, oh Lord. Oh. My joy in a time of sorrow, oh Lord. You're my strength when 
there is no other, oh Lord. Oh, 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 oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh, oh, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. One more time. You're my joy in the time of sorrow, oh Lord. I want to thank you. Said you're my strength when there is no other, oh Lord. Oh, 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 oh Lord. Oh my Lord. Oh Lord. Anybody want to thank the Lord today? He is so worthy of all the praise and all the glory. I want to thank you all so much for supporting Fun Day, those that were able to come out on yesterday. We had a great turnout, and somebody was praying. I kept those storm clouds back. It was the perfect temperature. They had plenty of food out there and nice music that was going on. We sure know how to uh, turn out a, a block party. Uh, here in the community. So thank you. Thank you for your support with that. Um, please be praying for all the bereaved families. We have a funeral after our 11 o'clock service today uh, over at New Goshen. Uh, Sherman Donnell's mother passed away. So pray for the Donnell family that they be encouraged in this time of bereavement. Um, that Psalm 23 that was actually read twice uh, today uh, is definitely from the Lord. Uh, Minister Hampton didn't know our response of reading would be Psalm 23. So um, whoever that word is for, that scripture, please take it and be comforted uh, in these times that God will never leave you or forsake you. Are you ready for God's word today? Please grab those Bibles and let's go back to Luke chapter 6. Uh, we've been working our way through, and I'll be honest, it's been challenging to me going through this um, line upon line, precept upon precept, because um, these things that Jesus are, is preaching really touch the core of who we are. Uh, so many times we can be so selfish, but thank God um, that he continues to deal with us. So I want you to focus in on Luke 637, Luke 637. And um, as we are uh, looking at that together, let's go in a word of prayer.
Father, I just thank you so much for who you are, Lord. Um, you just, you've just been awesome. Uh, when we think about all the grace and mercy, those uh, first cousins that uh, you've allowed us to have over and over again, even when we didn't deserve it, we just got to say thank you. Now, Lord, I pray for those that are here today that maybe they don't know you. Uh, would you help them to confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you've raised them from the dead and you said they would be saved. Lord, help them to have a reality of Ephesians 2 and 8 about that grace. It's about uh, grace through faith and not of themselves. It's a gift from you. Help them to receive that gift today. Now, Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me all of un unrighteousness, and I welcome you, Holy Spirit. Would you please teach us, guide us, lead us into all truth. Make this word so plain, so easy to be understood that even a small child can be transformed to be like you. Please be in my eyes and my seeing, my mouth and my speaking, my heart and my understanding. We thank you, Lord, for your anointing today. We need to be transformed from the inside out. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Look at this, Luke 6, 37. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Again, Luke 6, 37. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. I want to speak from a title today, What Goes Around, Comes Around. Amen. What goes around, comes around. Our time frame is A.D. 30. Um, Jesus has been constantly challenged by the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious sect of that time. Those have been walking with us through this scripture. Um, it's amazing that God can come from heaven to earth, and people don't understand his majesty. Um, they're not willing to submit to his authority. Um, last time we were together, remember Luke 6, 31, and just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. And we talked about the golden rule. Uh, it's true as God uh, gives us some precepts as Christians that we can live in our daily lives. Uh, just points in review when that last point is going to actually be our title transitioning. Remember from last time, only through Jesus. We can only walk this way if we have Christ. And I'll explain more of that as we get into the message today. We act differently than our enemies. We take a licking, but we keep on ticking. We have an unlimited supply. God has given us an unlimited supply of forgiveness. And also, again, that last point from last Sunday, what goes around comes around. Let's jump into this section, Luke 6, 32. Um, Jesus is not just talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but he's talking to all those who are willing to hear. Uh, most importantly, those that are willing to not just hear, but to listen, to take in those thought patterns. And I encourage you, as you go to the scriptures, slow down and ask God, what are you speaking to me? Um, if you're the type of person that read and you go, you know what, such and such needs this, you're missing the whole thing. If you're the one, you're like, man, this is a good word. This is a good word for such and such. Or I wish they'd have been in 8 o'clock service to get this. You're missing it because God wants to speak to us. 632, but if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. Wow, powerful scripture. First point of the day for our note takers and those just to kind of process this scripture. The Christian loves even when unloved. Isn't that powerful? The Christian loves even when unloved. Now, that's tough, and we're, Jesus is going to dig in because he understands. The Pharisees and Sadducees, they do not love him, but he still loves those who are his enemies who are against him. Unsaved men can love those who love them. That's the natural behavior. Man, you got people who love you. You can love them. They giving you money all the time. They taking care of you. Man, you can love a person like that, but when, when that person is talking about you, when that person is mistreating you or always taking things from you, it's hard to love them. Um, Dr. Tony Evans told this story some time back that gives us a picture of this. Let me read it to you. It says, a man and his friend were playing golf one day, and one of the guys was getting ready to make his chip shot. As he prepared to stroke the ball on the green, he saw a long funeral procession on the road next to the golf course. The man took off his golf cap, got on his knees, bowed his head to pray. His friend said, wow, 
beautiful. That, that's the most loving and thoughtful and touching thing I've ever seen. I can't believe how great it was for you to stop your golf swing because of a funeral possession was passing by. What thoughtfulness. What love. The man replied, yeah, well, we were married for 35 years. I figured that was the least I could do. <laughs> we got to have a better love than that. Often we find our motives, and we're going to deal with that a little later, our motives. Why do we do the things that we do? Luke 6, and 34. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. Here's another point. Christian standards must exceed the good standards of sinners. Christian standards must exceed the good standards of sinners. Because there are a lot of sinners that do good things. They give big, but they don't love Jesus. They don't even know who Jesus is. They can reach out, but it's why they're doing these things. And oftentimes we're trying to compare ourselves. We're saying, well, at least I'm doing as good as my neighbor. That's not a good comparison. You have to compare yourself to what Christ does. Because our standards of truly being saved should go over top. The sinners can't even understand why we do the things that we do. This is the, the picture. Um, as we go to banks, and, and, and some of you have gone to banks to get a loan, if you go to a bank and you think that the bank loves you, that's why they're giving you money. You got the wrong idea. And amen. If you go, you go, man, I, I, I came out of the bank with this great loan. The bank really loves me. They love They gave me this money. No, no. The bank gave you that money because they made a bet on you and they could get a percentage off of you and they're going to get their money back. That's why they, it was it had nothing to do about love. You, you're like, I got a hookup in the bank. No, it wasn't about a hookup. It was they looked at your credit score and they said, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of see what we're going to do. No love was in it. Um, sinners, they go down to the casino. And you, I don't want you to mistake. You may think, man, these, these sinners, they such giving people. They just give their money away. They just go to casino because they love the casino operators. And they go, they got so much money, they just want to bless the casino. No, they're not giving their money away because they love the casino operators. But they believe if I give, I'm going to give more. That I'm going to get something in return. We, we, we need to bring this a little close to home because I know some of you are sitting here today. Um, those who play the lottery. North Carolina lottery. See, some of you, you already got it. You're already a pastor. Don't mess with me because I give my money because I want to I wanna bless the school system. That's what I want. That's what it's for. So I'm going down there. I'm giving my hard-earned money because I want them to have better books and I want them to have, you know, good chair and an air condition, all of these things. No, no, that's not for most folks. You, you ain't playing the lottery because you want to bless uh, the, the kids. You want to get a return. You want your number to come in. That's why. So it has nothing to do about your giving per se. It's about your motive in your giving. What goes around comes around. Let's dig a little deeper. Uh, Luke 6, 35. Jesus says, but love your enemies. Are you with me? Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Here's another point. Only by faith. You can only do this truly by having faith in the Lord and know that he's changing from the inside out. Because our nature fights against this. Our nature fights when people don't do good to us. We don't want to do good to them. We, we want to get them back, right? Are there any awake folks in here? You, you know y'all acting all holy and sanctified. When somebody does something bad to you, you want to get them. That, that's your first nature. You're not, your first nature is not, well, I'm just going to pray for them. Hallelujah. No, your first nature, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut some tires. That's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to get back. And that's what our first nature is. Thank God for Jesus. It rises up on the inside. This, this, but love your enemies? Some of you can't even get along with your husband and wives. 
Hebrews 11, 1 and 2. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good testimony. As a Christian, we walk by faith. We supersede what our flesh feels like, and we walk and we say, God, I need you to use me. I need you to work in me. God, I trust you because your word is true. By us loving our enemies, God is able to work on a higher level. It's really, it's really bigger than you can imagine. Uh, God lets us know in 1 Timothy 2, 3 through 6, he said, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. God said, I want you to do these principles because I'm trying to save folks. I'm trying to deliver people. And, and I'm telling you, some of you have some, some testimonies in here. The person that is your worst enemy now can be your best friend tomorrow. Yeah, because God can change. And some of you just, you just raise your hand just a little bit. You know you were somebody's enemy, but aren't you glad God saved you and delivered you and set you free and gave you a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth chance? God is good. What goes around comes around. Look at Luke 6, 37. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Here's another point. Kind of talked about it. It's deeper than you may think. Really, God is dealing with it on another level as we dig deeper and deeper on this. Theologian Farstead gives us a clear insight. He says, first of all, we must not judge people's motives. We cannot read the heart and so cannot know why a person acts as he does. But there are certain areas, however, in which Christians must judge. We must often judge whether other people are true Christians. Otherwise, we could never recognize an unequal yoke, 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Sin must be judged in the home and in the assembly. In short, we must judge between good and evil, but we must not impugn motives or assassinate character. Oftentimes we get confused with that judging. Uh, we have to see what's right and wrong, but the problem is we can't look into people's hearts. Yeah, be careful when you start thinking they did this because of such and such. You, you don't know their heart. You don't know why. You don't know what they've gone through. Only God can deal with the heart, and that's why we have to be uh, quick to forgive because we know hurting people hurt folks. Yeah, if you're going through some things in your life, you often are not one that's going to reach out and grab and embrace somebody. You're going to lash out. And it has nothing to do with that person. It's because you've got hurt that's going on in your heart. But aren't you glad that God knows those hurts and is willing to work with you? That's why he wants us to forgive and embrace and love those who may not treat us right. Look at 638. This is a principle we talked about on last Sunday. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Here's another point. Those who give generously are rewarded generously. Those who give generously are rewarded generously. Please understand, it's about our heart and how we give. So if I'm giving generously, that same measure is going to come back to me. Now, I wanted you to get a, a picture of, of this Greek, this thought that Jesus is coming. They're in an agricultural society. So when he talks about giving, it shall be given to you, he's actually coming from an agricultural point. It's actually talking about planting seeds. So, so hopefully you can get this, and hopefully I don't hurt anybody today. During that um, time of farming they would put on aprons. And as they had those aprons on, uh, they would go about, they had seeds, and they didn't have the big machinery so that they could plant um, the seeds. They had to disperse it. So when Jesus was talking about that, he was talking about how they actually put the seed into their aprons. And he says there's something, a principle about that. Mr. Hampton, if you can help me, if you just hold this for me. They would take these, the seeds, and they would put a little bit in their apron. 
And when they put the seeds in their apron, they would spread it. So I'm not one of those farmers. As they looked at that, they would get so good at it, they would flip it. And what it's saying is, the more effort they went to pressing out those seeds, the farther that they could throw them, God said, I'm going to bless you in the same manner. So as I throw that seed out, it disperses. The issue is, I know the general place that those seeds went into. I, I, Deacon Winstead sat there, but there was one of the kids back there. said, oh, Lord, I got hit with a seed. <laughs> it was not my plan. It was not my plan to, to hit that child with a seed, but that's what giving does. When you begin to bless folks, you bless people that you don't even know you bless. Oh, I'm telling you, because some people are looking at how you react to your enemy. They're looking at what you do and what you're understanding. You got to go. When, when God says forgive, you just got to start flipping seeds. I'm flipping seeds. And God is saying, that's, that's my child. That's my child. And so what God does, he does a reverse in this whole, as we broadcast that seed out, God is saying there's a, there's a fixed principle to this. In that scripture, he said that the same measure we use to others is measured back to us. So the more I flick those seeds and put out, God has said, you can't beat me in giving. Reverend Ike, y'all remember that? Some of y'all grew up Reverend Ike. Some of y'all gave y'all money to Reverend Ike. Reverend Ike, he had his issues, theologically and everything. But he would say certain things. I remember before I went to church, 11 o'clock service, uh, my mama used to look at, listen to Reverend Ike, and my grandma used to listen to Reverend Ike. Reverend Ike. He would come on. It was like, you know, we did us that. He would drive nice cars and everything. He would say this saying, he said, you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. I said, that's a man of God right there. That's a man of God. And he would say that over and over again. He got the principle right. When we are dispersing and we're giving out forgiveness, you can't be because God will overtake you with blessing. There ought to be some amens in the house. I'm telling you, no matter what your enemy takes away from you, you just keep on giving. God is going to give you exceedingly, abundantly, more than you can dare ask or think. And some of you are living in that right now. What goes around comes around. It's a fixed principle. You cannot go against it. It does not matter. When you give, God said, I'm giving back to you. When the motives of your heart is right and you continue to give, God said, I'm coming. It will overtake you. And some of you don't realize how blessed you are. Some of you need to realize you didn't work hard enough to get retirement. I'm talking to those that's retiring right now. You didn't work hard enough. You did. You did. You didn't save a, a, enough to do that. But aren't you glad in your life you got saved and delivered and set free and God blessed you in spite of your lazy self? There ought to be some hallelujah in the house. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, those that are still working, you don't work hard enough to keep up what you got right now. You don't. You don't deserve the house that you got. You don't deserve the car, the clothes. You don't deserve the food that you got. But aren't you glad that somewhere in your life you were able to give and God return that back to you over and over again? And you may be struggling, but you need to thank God that it could be worse. Thank God for giving back to you. Galatians speaks of this wonderful principle, Galatians 6, 7. It says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, and he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are the household of faith. Isn't it sad? Many of our enemies are not our neighbors across the street. It's folks that we fell out with in church.
we, we got problems in church. And so instead of dealing with that, and if I'm, I'm in your, your, your area now, I'm sorry, God's just putting it on my heart. Instead of dealing with that in the church that you're in, what we do, we get mad. We talk about those folks, and we move to another church. Never resolving our issues with them. So what you do, you, you actually sow bad seeds. And so the problem, because you never fixed it, you never gave forgiveness, you moved to another church, and guess what? All that happens to you is the weeds that you sowed there, they grow up. And you wonder, why am I feeling the same way here? And so you get mad at somebody else. You, you don't give forgiveness to somebody else. And so what do you do? You take your little red wagon. Take your little ball, and you move somewhere else, but you never resolve. And so you got issues in the first church, you got issues in the second church, and then you move to the third church, and you got all of these weeds. Because what you gave grows back up. God is saying we've got to realize that now we are Christians, we forgive and we love because we know there's a backside to it. Man, if you do something bad to me, I can't live my life dealing with what you did to me. I, I can't do that. You got to deal with that. That's between you and the Lord. I got to release you and love you and give to you because I realize I want to sow some good seed because no matter where I go, I want good stuff to be growing up. Anybody want good stuff to be growing up? I don't have time for weeds and messed up stuff. I want it to grow up. At our house, um, my wife, is she's on this project, she wants to... I'm, I'm blow some flowers and stuff like that. And, and I, I said, honey, it's, it's all on you. I, said, I gave her the budget. I said, just don't go over this amount. Just, just don't go over this amount. So she got somebody helping her and coming in and everything. And, and the first thing that they did, uh, Deacon Rudd, Deacon Lenny, is that they, they, they killed the grass. They said, we, we can't have this type of grass growing here and then have nice flowers. And so if you, if you come to my house right now, we got a, a beautiful green side. But we got a part that, that's just totally brown. See, if, if you want to get new growth, you got to make sure the stuff that was growing that was bad dies. What goes around comes around. Some of you are having problems with your garden. It's, it, you're like, man, I got some bad seeds. No, you didn't get bad seeds. You had bad stuff already in the ground before you put the seeds. That's where not, we're not getting the process back in our life. We have not dealt, dealt with the things that are choking us. As we sum all this together, I, I want to take it to the cross uh, real quick. I want to get in your mind because Jesus did something that's magnanimous when we think about it. Paul, the apostle, led of the Holy Spirit, gives us a wonderful example to understand that what goes around comes around. In Philippians 2, 3, he said, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each one esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Others. What goes around comes around. So as I'm a Christian, I've got to realize God has been so good to me. He's been taking care of my needs that I don't even have to worry about my needs anymore. I don't have to worry about the stuff that I want because God is already providing for it. So that gives me the opportunity to bless you over and over again, to give to you more and more. And God is saying, I got you back. I got you back. I'm going to keep blessing you and I'm going to keep taking care of you. But notice Philippians 2 and 5 gives us a greater understanding of the spirit. It said, let let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God and did not consider it robbery to be equal to God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of man. What goes around comes around. Jesus said, I'm going to come from heaven to earth and walk among men. And you may have thought that that was a great and wonderful thing, that somehow he was elevating himself to come to the earth, but actually he was lowering himself. He had the gold streets of gold in heaven. He had the royal robes in heaven, but he said, Father, I'll subject myself. I'll lower myself, and I'll walk with men and women. I'll show them how to heal the sick and raise the dead. I'll show them how to love their enemy. Philippians 2 and 8 and said, being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. There ought 
to be some hallelujahs in the house today to know that our Jesus, you got to realize this, he could have called legions of angels to set him free, but he humbled himself. He said, God, I'm going to love my enemies even when they're piercing me. I'm going to love my enemies even when they're beating me. I'm going to love my enemies even when they're betraying me. I'm going to love my enemies even when they turn their backs on me. That's why he goes to Gagatha's Hill, nails in his hands and nails in his feet. There ought to be a few hallelujahs in the house that he loved us in spite of ourselves. There he carried our grease and bore our pain. I'm so glad about it. There he cries out, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But the scripture is not over Philippians 2 and 9. Therefore God has also exalted him and given him a name that is which, which is above every name. He dies on the cross of Calvary. Uh, they didn't know what was going on. They peeled his body off the cross. They put him in a coal tomb. There he was there three days, but he got up on the third day with all power. Please, I'm showing you about what goes around, comes around. Because he gave so much, God the Father said, I'm going to give you a name that's above every name. That at the name of Jesus, that's what Philippians 2 and 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the God, the Father. The scriptures say no matter what you believe, every knee is going to bow to him. It doesn't matter the staunchest atheists in the house. Every knee is going to bow. But there's some Christians in the house. We just decided to go ahead and bow today. Because when I think how good he's been to me when I think how much he's blessed me come on to your feet please what goes around comes around judge not and you shall not be judged condemn not and you shall not be condemned forgive and you will be forgiven what will be your choice today God has done so much. Don't take that for granted. Oh, he's so faithful. For that powerful word this morning coming from a pastor. Amen. Amen. The golden rule. That's, that's so much. That was, that's so rich this morning. I pray that you heard the spirit of God and just took down some notes this morning because I did. It, 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 it was just so, so much in that. This morning, as, as Christians, as believers, we, we operate on a higher standard. Amen? We've been washed by the blood of Jesus. Our names are written in our Heavenly Father's Lamb's Book of Life. Amen? We are the redeemed. We are the called out ones this morning. So, this morning, if you're here and, and, you know, you've heard this powerful word this morning and, you know, you've been, you've been given, you know, you've been sowing and it just seemed like anything has been coming back, you know, for you on a, on a positive note. You know, he said, just don't be weary, okay? Don't, don't give up. Forgive. And you will be forgiven. Show mercy. And you will get that in return. Don't, don't give up. The enemy wants us to give up, cave in, and quit this morning. But let me tell you, the devil is a liar this morning. Amen. We stand on the word of God. So, there in it this morning here that, that needs prayer this morning. First of all, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior... You don't know that forgiveness. You have, to have not experienced that forgiveness this morning. I want you to just come forward. And if you have not confessed him as Lord and Savior, the Bible says, those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If that's you this morning, I want you to just come on down. Our deacons and our missionaries are here this morning, those that are here, to pray for you, to agree with you in prayer. Secondly, if you don't have a church home, Ebenezer is a place that you could put down your roots. We're family here. And I, we came here for 
I guess about maybe a month, couple of months, and uh, we heard God the first time we came. But pastor, so gracious, he didn't put any pressure on us, and then we came and we joined, and what a sweet fellowship. And lastly, if you just need prayer, the Bible says that if, if, if there's any sick among you, Call for the elders of the church, that is, those are mature ones. These ministers here to, to pray for you. Anybody just weary, you're frustrated, you're full of anxiety, just come and meet these ones here at the altar. And they will just pray with you and stand with you that God will meet your need. It's all about the heart this morning. It's all about the heart. Let us pray. Our Father God in heaven, we thank you today for the word that's gone forth. Lord, we thank you that we are called with a holy calling. We are a peculiar people. We are that royal priesthood. And Lord, we walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, we thank you today that I ask that you would just look on these that are here today. The enemy has been pointing his ugly finger at us and says, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're not getting anything in return. I'm here to tell you today that the devil is a liar. We declare today that we're going to walk by faith and not by sight. We're going to give, we're going to sow, we're going to be, we're going to show mercy we're going to sow kindness. We're going to sow forgiveness. Because God, you said that the word said, if we give it, it shall be given back to us. By way of a good measure, pressed down and shaken together. Lord, we ask right now that you would just have your way, Lord. Have your way today. That we won't grow weary and well-doing. That we won't give up, cave in, and quit that we'll keep sowing to the kingdom because God, you says that in due time, we will reap that harvest that we have been sowing for. And Lord, I ask that you just have your way in the name of Jesus. We thank you in a mighty way, Lord. We thank you and we praise you in your awesome name. Thank God all over the sanctuary. Amen and amen. How great, how great. As we're closing out today, I want to thank you so, so much for your support of our 8 o'clock service and your giving and your love. Um, God has exceeded our expectations, so continue to pray. Continue to invite um, your family and friends to our 8 o'clock service. Let them know very concise. Most of the time we're out of here by 9.15. And, and you get breakfast, too. You can't beat that deal. It wasn't our plan. We didn't start out with that. But we just had some wonderful givers here at Ebenezer that wanted to express their gift and um, um, producing breakfast for you. So continue to invite those. We've got a lot of workers. Um, you're working on Sunday. God has given provision. You can come out to your 8 o'clock service. Let them know that. Uh, you can get it in, praise and worship, get a good word, and then you can go on your job and deal with all those cancerous people. And you can say, Pastor preached on forgiveness today. I can give forgiveness. So please spread the word. We're going to disperse that out, that God is doing something wonderful here at Ebenezer. Father, thank you so much for today. Lord, help us not to just uh, listen to that word, but help us to take it in and help us to actually do that which you've taught us. Lord, as we continue through that chapter, we want to be more like you. It's tough, Lord. We understand it's only by faith. And what goes around comes around. As we leave this place, 
Let us not leave your presence. Order ourselves. Bless the food. Bless the fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you give somebody a, a hug, high five? We want to give so it'll come back. Whatever you want to come back to you, you give to you.